Dominate. Whatever you want, you got to commit all the way in and think in terms of domination, not a spectator. You don't want to be a spectator, folks. Spectators pay, players get paid. What I want to talk to you today about is like, how do you get to that next level? My, my whole life, whether I was doing well or doing very poorly, which I have, I've always wanted to know, how do I get to that next place? Okay, how, how do I, I get myself individually, as an individual, to that next place? How do I get my business to the next place? How do I get other people to the next place? So when Alex says that he stole my guy, it's true, he did. And I admire him for bre- being a predator. Today, what I want to talk to you about is how to dominate and not compete. The truth is, the fact that Alex could take one of my guys doesn't make him a bad guy. It makes my system weak. I shouldn't resent him because he grabbed somebody out of my organization. Hoorah for him. Would you agree? Shame on me for having, not having the holes or the links tight enough in my organization that this guy wouldn't leave me. It's not his fault, it's not Alex's fault, it's my fault. So look, in my life, I mean, what I'm gonna give you for the next 50 or 60 minutes, look, if you wanna get rich, you wanna be really successful. When I say rich, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about a rich life. Freedom, time with family, choices, get to do what you want. You get to move where you want, go where you want, do what you want. I've lived in Los Angeles, California for 10 years. I was in La Jolla, California for 12 years before that. I left Texas. 0% state income tax, to move to California, was willing to pay the 10.3. I was fine with the 10.3. Now they want to take it to 13. And I told Jerry Brown, if you raise it to 13, I'm leaving. I'm going to pick up my family. I'm going to pick up my business. Why? Because I'm free. I'm free. I get to roll, baby. I get to do what I want, go where I want. That's why I'm in business for myself. I'm not trapped. I'm not a slave. You're not going to handcuff me. So I'm going to go where it's friendly, where people are supportive, where it's good for me and my business and my family and the people that work with me and where it's good for me. And I would expect that that's why you got in business for yourself, right? Look, if you want to be in business for yourself and free, you must learn to dominate. You cannot compete. Okay. How many were trained this? Competition is a healthy thing. That message was not being delivered to entrepreneurs. That message was being delivered to consumers. There was somebody saying, look, the more more oil companies we have, the better, because it's good for the customer, right? The, The more technology companies we have, it's not just Microsoft, the better for the customer. And inventions and, you know, improvements and products comes from competition. But if you're the one playing the game, you want to dominate the field. Would you agree? Let's say I'm playing a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game. I want to be on offense the whole time. Right? If I owned banks, I'd want to own every bank. I'd want the new world order. I'd want to dominate planet Earth. Okay? How many of you in the room have an iPhone? How many in the room have a phone that looks like... Let me see, where's mine at? I never let go of my phone, ever. You know why? Because this phone is a prospecting tool. This phone is a way for me to stay in communication with millions of people. This is not a phone anymore, right? When Steve Jobs got into the business of printing phones, do you know what his company told him? Stevie, don't do it. Do not do it. Stay with your iPods, bro. Leave the phone alone. Okay? He's like, I'm going to make a phone so sexy. Y'all know this story? I'm gonna make a phone so sexy that people will wanna lick the buttons off the phone. How many of you have an Apple product, an iPhone? How many of you have licked your phone? Okay, most of you in a room bought that phone in the last five years. You bought it through the single worst contraction in the history of the United States and you spent 500 bucks on it, plus the hundred and a quarter you spend every month, right? You got about $2,000 wrapped up in a phone and you haven't even considered what you paid for that phone and you don't use it. You don't use it properly. And I'm telling you, if you don't have a piece of technology like this, it's impossible for you to dominate. Impossible. If you, this is called a smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, what kind of phone do you have? That would be a dumb phone, right? 
Yeah, I got a dumb phone. I got one of those old Blackberries. All I can do is email with it. Dude, you want, the, you want this thing to do everything. You want this thing. I want to be everywhere all at the same time. That's freedom. Okay? So look, I want to talk to you about domination, not competition. And I don't want to talk about you dominating other people physically. I want to talk about dominating space by using things like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and, and Google Plus and blogging and becoming an expert in your field to where when somebody thinks about your business, your picture comes up. If that's not happening, you are going to blame the marketplace. The marketplace will, will deliver pain to the people that compete. Why? Because they're all competing. And then there's this one guy way out in the lead. He doesn't compete. Right? That's where you want to be. That's how you have to think now. Okay, you're in a new economy. How many believe this, this economy, the one you're in right now, is extremely fragile, filled with tremendous amounts of uncertainty? How many agree with that? Okay? How many agree also, come 2013, when this election gets handled, whether it's Mitt or whether it's Mr. Barack Obama, whoever it is, okay, how many believe they got their hands full? Dude, we, we haven't even solved the debt problem yet. Okay? You think this thing couldn't roll over again? I'm here to tell you it can. And you know who's going who's gonna to feel the pain? The people that compete. Who will cherish that moment but the people that dominate space? Why? Because people that dominate like contractions. People that are extremely well-versed, well-trained. You know, if I'm training for a ball game, right, I'm the best trained team, I like a muddy feel. I like it wet. I like, their, I like ice on the field. Would you agree? Because my, my competition is not as well trained. I want to dominate space. I actually look for opportunities of contraction. Trust me, folks, in your lifetime, you're going to see another contraction more severe, severe than the one you saw in 2007. More severe. Does that scare you? It scares me. It scares me enough to say, hey, buddy, you got to better get busy. I was 51 years old when Lehman's collapsed. Okay, let me see. Is that right? No, I was... 49 years old when Lehman's collapsed. I had never written a book in my life. It was on Thursday afternoon, Lehman's, it had been made clear that Bear Stearns and Lehman's were done, okay? On that day, I'm sorry, I started writing a book. By Sunday, I was finished with this book. I wrote the chapters between Thursday and Saturday, okay? On Sunday, I started writing the book in three hours, it was finished. This book is about, on that day I wrote, all people on planet Earth became salespeople when Lehman's collapsed because money wasn't available anymore. Who did well? How many people just got wiped out of real estate? The pretenders did. Right? The, the guy that was at Pizza Hut and now he got in the mortgage business, he can't make 700 grand anymore, can he? Truth is, he never deserved the 700. See, the marketplace will always discipline people that aren't prepared. Success loves preparation. It loves it. It admires it. It just flows money back to it. Success loves preparation. And the marketplace will discipline those that are just stuck in the pack. So today I'm not going to talk to you about dominating your market or even dominating your competition, but I want to start thinking about how are you dominating yourself? Like, what do you think the number one thing that most of us have our attention on every day? And one of the things, one of the things that makes these conferences so beautiful is you get pulled out of some of that noise out there. Would you agree? Who do you think your number one competition, number one problem in real estate today is? Yourself? Okay, who else? Who else could it be? Say again? Absolutely the people around you. Anytime I have production stall in any of my companies, the first thing I look at, I don't look for talent. I look to get rid of people. First thing I do every time, who, who can I get rid of? I'm looking for somebody to freaking kill. I need to get rid of somebody. You know why? Because I push with so much force into my universe, into my businesses, whether it's buying real estate, apartments, whether it's, it's pushing rents up, whether it's doing my seminar business, my book business, I push so hard that if I'm not getting results all the time, somebody has to be pushing back. Somebody in my organization actually has to have the intention, conscious or unconscious, to hold me up. The first thing I'm going to do is start getting rid of people. Okay, who is it? Who is it? I'm looking for the, I'm looking for the, the cancer in my organization. 
You know, you talk about people dying from disease. Look, people die from negativity every day. They just got to wait 80 years to make it official. How many of you know negative people? How many in the room have been negative before? You have been negative. You know why? Because the number one dominating force on planet Earth is the media. It's the media. The media, 800 TV channels spew negativity onto the American public and every other country on planet Earth. They, they just puke it on you. Oh, but I watch Fox. Good. They puke at Fox and they do at MSNBC. It's just you're in agreement with the puke. I got some conservative puke. I got some liberal puke. Right? And you got Stossel in the middle. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm just an independent puker. <laughs> Dude, puke is puke. Would you agree? Just because you got used to it. Oh, I, li I like O'Reilly's puke. I like Hannity's puke. I use every one of the news channels. If you, you, you'll see me on TV doing news one day, okay? I don't, I don't watch news. I make news. You see the shift? You see the slight shift? Don't watch the news. Decide when you leave here today to make the news, right? You don't read the newspaper, you write newspaper articles. You don't read books, yeah, read them, but learn to write them. And you don't, you don't need to take for it, you don't need to spend a lifetime writing the book. This was three hours. Okay, we sold 40,000 copies of this one book and it was self-published. It's never, ever, ever been in a bookstore. A guy writes me, he says, man, you got misspelled words all in that book. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what, 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 so what, where are they? 123, 128, 134, 165, 120. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And bad grammar too. I'm like, yeah, what's your point, dude? Because man, you got misspelled words in the book. It's a bestseller, bitch. The word bitch, look it up in the dictionary, means a complainer, a whiner, an excuse maker. I wear a little band on my pen here, uh, on my uh, wrist here. It's a little black band and it says, champions dominate. And on the other side, don't be a little bitch. <laughs> That's right. Because I don't need it. I need to get rid of the whiners, the excuse makers. Oh my God, it's the market. It's the market. Oh my God. Prices. Oh, inventory. Okay. Nine months ago, there's too much inventory. Now, too little inventory. You, 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 human beings have so many excuses. It's, it's unbelievable. You know why? Because you watch the news too much. Because you've agreed to receive news, not make news. So when Lehman's collapsed, I watched 25 years of hard work either either dissipate and I'd done everything right everything okay conservative never used high leverage I put sometimes I'll put 40% or 50% down on a deal everything cash flows from day one I didn't do any of the stuff all the problem makers did all the over leverage the debting all the builders that have never been disclosed that really created this problem it wasn't the banks it was the builders bringing product to the banks Born 115%, building product that couldn't be sold yet, making up actual buyers for the product, okay? I didn't do anything wrong yet. Was I caught up in it? All my assets gets frozen. I got a bank that I owe $42 million to. The bank goes under. New bank comes in. They don't know me. They're like, hey, let's go, right? Because my, my loan's maturing. Values had gone down, and I'm sitting with my wife saying, oh, my God, man. I got four businesses, and they're all on stall." Engines dying. What does this mean, Grant? My wife's an actress, okay? What does this mean? I said, baby, this is the biggest opportunity of our lifetime. <laughs> it's the biggest. It's the monster, okay? Now, here's the problem with it. You're going to 40% less than you've seen me before. Okay, you're not going to see me much because I'm gonna go out into the marketplace right now and I am gonna literally cover up. This is my moment to expand into the marketplace while everybody was doing what? What was everybody doing for three years? All of them retracted. 
okay? This is my moment to, to dominate, not compete. So that's really what I want to tell you about today. I want you to walk out thinking, man, how do I dominate? Not other people. How do I start dominating my own self, my own time? If you know what day it is, you're not busy enough. Okay? Oh, man, I can't wait till Friday. Dude, I don't even, what, what day is it right now? You should know it's Monday. You should be busy. You should be, but Grant, Sunday is the Lord's day. It's the day we take off. You need to reread that whole deal. God created the universes in six days and took a break. Okay? Everybody's stuck on the Sunday, okay? You forgot about the part he did before that. I know people taking Saturdays and Sundays off and they didn't create anything all week. True or not true? Look, I hear about the unemployment numbers every day. I said, I sure wish they'd talk about all the people that are employed that don't deserve a job. Because there's millions of those still in the marketplace. And the next time we get another contraction, those people are going to get fed, delivered pain. That's what the marketplace does, man. It basically disciplines anybody that refuses to discipline themselves. It is the correction. So look, here's the deal. I might be wrong in what I say, okay? I might be wrong in the things I do in my life and the business that I started. My family's told me not to start every business that I've been involved in, every one of them. Every one of them was a risk. Every one of them I had to ch- take a chance. I remember my mom used to tell me, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I'm like, mom, you wouldn't do anything. Well, you wouldn't do anything except be the mother, a great mother to five children. My mother wasn't an entrepreneur. She didn't have my dreams. Just because she's my mom doesn't mean she dreams like me. Would you agree? Okay. My mom was wrong about everything she told me not to do. Love my mom to death. Okay. Unbelievable friend of mine. She was wrong. I needed to do those things. Okay. Steve Jobs needed to build this phone. Would you agree? Did he help a lot of people? Did he make some money while he was doing it? $119 billion in five years in the bank, cash. I'm not talking about, pro- I'm talking about in the, in, done in the bank, sitting there, okay? Brings a great product to the marketplace. Domination or competition? Total domination. Coca-Cola, competition or domination? Total domination, okay? Exxon, total domination. You see what I'm saying? You wanna be in a dominating point, okay? So what we gotta do is we gotta get you thinking. We gotta get you thinking like the dominators think. How do they act? How does Warren Buffett act? What does Warren Buffett do with his time all the time? Those are the people I study today. I don't study the people that I went to school with, the teachers I went to school with. I don't even study my own family members, okay? I'm looking for people that are way up here that I can say, hey, what are they doing? Because they're doing it right. My dad died when he was 52 years old. My dad worked his whole life to provide for five kids and his wife, and he did his job, and then he died. That's not the program I want to get on. On, Is that the program you want to be on? My dad died his dream. He bought his dream house nine months before he died. He leaves two 10-year-old boys, one of me. I'm a twin. Two 10-year-old boys never got to enjoy us. I never got to enjoy him. Why? Because he worked so hard with no concept of freedom. He, was, he had a good job. He made some money. But he is basically imprisoned in his thinking that work is hard. It is. It's difficult to compete. Would you agree? Real estate's difficult. How many agree it's difficult? And when it gets good, what happens? Everybody comes into it, right? And then you're like, what's this guy doing it? Okay, what's this guy doing right now? So I look to surround myself with people that can dominate, people that are certain, okay? People that know what they're doing, people that are in control. So when I say I'll be uncertain, I might be wrong. I might be wrong about it, would you agree? Like I'm leaving California, I might be wrong, but I'm certain in my wrongness. Somebody said, how, you know, how do you know you're going to like Miami? Look, I'm going, I've already made a decision. I'm going to Miami. I'm moving to Miami. I'm going to like Miami. Why don't you go try it out? No need to try it out. I'm committed. Of course I need a realtor. Okay, no offense, but it's a dumb question. Why would you ask me, do I need a realtor? Do you think I don't need a realtor? No, I got the internet. I mean, really, really. See, see you, those are those things you're asking out of an old economy. You got to change some of your pitch. You got to think different. Austin, Texas. I don't own anything in Austin. 
one year ago. Last October, I'm in an exchange out of California. I find a piece of property on the internet. It's called the Monolino Apartments in Round Rock, uh, Texas. Anybody know that property? Property's been on the market for 10 months. It's 242 units. It cash flows right now. It's a great property, 10 years old. I call this guy the king of Austin commercial real estate. Charles, Grant Cardone from Los Angeles, California. I want to buy Round Rock. Yeah, sure. Now, this guy's the king. He's a legend. Okay? But you see, all legends have this cycle where they legend and then they lose interest. And they keep coasting as legends, and then what happens? They're not running the game anymore. They're not, they don't want to dominate. They're resting on yesterday's laurels. They're not reading anymore. They're not studying anymore. They're not coming to conferences anymore. Right? They're not in the game anymore. They're not preparing anymore. I'm listening to the phone call, okay? Because I think everything I think is in terms of domination. Everything, every phone call I'm on, every email, I'm looking all the time for that moment where I can seize an opportunity like, like, like Alex did with stealing some of my people, okay? Okay? A true American he is. I like that about you, dude, okay? See, that's a guy I can trust. That's the kind of guy I'd want to be in par a partnership with. Not somebody I wouldn't trust. Why? Because he's aggressive, dude. He's a winner. That's why you came. I don't, I don't want to be around people. Hey, you resting? You've been working so hard. Oh my God, man, when are you going to take a vacation? I mean, get a little break. You know, my assistant said, you need to get some rest. I'm going to get to hotel when you red eye into Orlando tonight. I'm going to get you a hotel. I'm like, hey, man, I don't need a hotel. I asked you for a hotel. Don't be stupid. Hey, you don't know if I'm tired or not. You're tired. You go get some rest. I'm fine. How many of you, not, you never, if you ever seen anybody die from work, I want to see your hand. You ever seen that happen? It's going to happen to you. People are dying every day. They don't get burnout. You don't get burnout. You lose your purpose. You lose your purpose. You lose your meaning. When I'm tired, I look at my purpose. What's my purpose? Okay, what's my purpose? Oh, my game's not big enough. My game's not big enough. My game's not big enough. I'm not interested anymore. Right? So here I am, Lehman's collapse, it folds up. I got real estate tied up, okay? I start blowing these books out. Every six months I'm writing a book. And then I start expanding back in the marketplace with real estate. I start looking for opportunities in real estate. I call this Charles Sakar guy up. I'm like, hey, that 242 units in Round Rock, I wanna buy it. This is what he tells me. I've never sold anything to anybody in California. I said, well, dude, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and break that up for you. Okay. You're not going to be able to say that you, you guys are too difficult to work with. I'm like, dude, I'm the easiest clothes you will ever get in your life. What am I doing right now? He's like, look, the, the seller wants full price Pro product's been on the marketplace for 10 months. I don't tell Charles it's been on the market for 10 months. I don't tell Charles it's overpriced. This is what I tell Charles. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to close in 30 days. I'm going there tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow. I'm on a plane tomorrow. Would you at least drive over there and meet me? Okay. It's 2000 miles for me and it's probably 18 miles for you. <laughs> I'm going to pay full price for it, Charlie. Okay. It's going to be the easiest deal you ever did in your whole freaking life. Okay. I guarantee you I'll get a loan or I'll pay cash for it. Would you, 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 would you meet me tomorrow, please? What am I doing right now? Huh? I'm selling him. I'm not, this ain't begging. Shit, this is begging. Charles, please, please, Charles. Please, Charles, Charlie, 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 please. Please, Charles. I'm selling Charlie right now, why? A buyer has to sell. To get a loan, I gotta sell the bank. You guys aren't in real estate, you're business people. And every business person has to sell. You show me one business that doesn't have to sell. The day Steve Jobs died, they called him everything. Inventor, genius, world changer, ding the universe. They called him all these things, not one tweet. And there was hundreds of thousands of tweets. Not one tweet said, Steve Jobs, master salesperson. But that's what he was. Why? Because in America, we have this disdain for selling. We have a hate, a dislike. You don't even put it on your business cards, do you? Oh, shit, I can't put that on. No, no, I'll call myself anything but a salesperson. Right? You tell me somebody that's not a salesperson. What do you think? What happened? 
If you go to India, you go to Mexico, or you go to China, and I walk in a room and say, I am a master salesperson. I know everything about a sale. I know as much about selling as a neurosurgeon knows about the brain. I know when somebody says budget, it's over our budget, I actually know that that means they'll go over their budget. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't understand when somebody says they have a budget, if you really break that down, you'd understand that they're actually saying, I bought from everybody except you. And that's why I put a budget in place. I'm trying to control my urge to purchase. So when somebody says to me, but it's more money than we planned on, oh, I'm with you. Sign right there. It won't be the first time. All right, you're right. Let's do it. The product's too much money. Do you hear that objection? You knew that before you called me. And you still made the phone call. Let's go see it today. Okay? I'm selling a piece of real estate in, and I'll come back to the Round Rock story. My house is being sold in Hollywood. Every realtor in town told me it was too much money. Every realtor. It's too much money. They said I was an idiot. They said I was stupid. They said he, he's insane. Okay? The person that's going to buy my house is going to be a billionaire. It doesn't matter. A million dollars here, a million dollars there. It doesn't matter. Right? Does he overpay for everything? A guy that's worth $39 billion. Does he overpay for stuff? Huh? What do you think? Every day. So why shouldn't he overpay for my house? What's the difference, man? Come on, bro. It's just money. Let's roll. But, but selling my real estate in Hollywood during, the, during, during a tough market, I have to keep the realtor sold. You got to stay certain. How do you know it's overpriced? Alex was showing you numbers today. You were wrong for the last 30 years. Right? Miami, you can't buy anything in Miami. They said they had 10 years of condo stock in Miami. Dude, they got two months of condo stock or less. Okay? If you look at the prices in Miami, they are straight up and vertical. It's the hottest real estate market in the country. You got people from Argentina, Brazil coming in. You got people from Russia and Europe and France saying, this is cheap. This is steal. See, people in the neighborhood never change the market. You know why? Because they're looking in the rear view mirror. How many of you drive a car? Next time you get in your car, I want you to pay attention to the windshield. Okay? It's that big. The rear view mirror is about that big. I could take my rearview mirrors out, jerk them out of my car because I have all my attention up in front of me. The other thing is I go extremely fast so I don't have people on the side of me. I'd rather the ticket. I want to get there quick. I value my time. Do you? Right? So this Charles Sicard guy's like, oh my God, you, you're going to come out here. You really a buyer. Have you looked over stuff? Dude, I'll pay the full price. I'll do the deal. And what I realized with Charles Sicard was the wrong broker to list this property. He was doing this to everybody. He wasn't doing it just to me, okay? I bought the property, paid full price, closed on a Thursday, put it back on the market the following Thursday for $18.6 million, closed in three months for 18.3, and I paid 16. This happened six months ago. In Austin, Texas, tough, tough market to buy a product in. Would you agree? Multifamily product, B quality, a lot of institutions could look at that kind of product, it's big enough, okay? But you gotta get in the game to dominate the game. You gotta look for every opportunity. How many believe you're missing opportunities right now? They're coming past you, they're, they're there. You gotta, you gotta get in the game. You can't be in a newspaper. You can't be on TV. You can't be watching Anderson Cooper in his little tight t-shirt and he comes out and thinks it's big news. I'm like, dude, everybody knew. Come on, bro, okay? Biggest problems, biggest problems, okay? Number one, biggest problem is uncertainty. It's not competition, it's not the banks, it's not leverage, it's not competition, it is uncertainty. You're uncertain. If you're uncertain, I'm uncertain. Would you agree? You get uncertain, I don't know if I should do it or not. Number two, obscurity. I don't know who you are. If you don't know who I am, and that's why I told Alex, I said, let's do the video. I don't even think we did the video, did we? Yeah, we did the video, okay? People have to know who they're doing business with. If I'm obscure and you don't know me, okay, here Lehman's collapsed, nobody knows me. 
So I write a book. I write this book, come out with it. Six months later, write a book on closing a deal. Okay, we, we publish that book. We talk about it. This book comes out, if you're not first, you're last. I'm talking about it. This is in one year, three books, okay? If you're not first, you're last is a book about how to literally get people to not forget you, okay? That becomes a New York Times bestseller. And then I come out with the 10X rule. This outsells every other business book in, in airports. Now, why am I writing books? There's no money in books, folks. Why would I write four books? The average American reads one book a year. Why would I write books? Say again. Notoriety. I'm, try I'm trying to cover up space. These are losers. I lose money selling books. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. This is Jared, by the way. Give Jared a big hand. Okay. Jared helped me win some money last night playing blackjack. We dominated. Okay, these people dominate. What? Look, look, look around this. Look around this place. Can we get you something to drink, huh? Can I get you cigarettes? Why are they doing that? They don't want you leaving that table. Can they get you insurance? <sighs> I got some insurance for that 16. Dude, look, if they offer something to you in this town, don't take it. Why am I doing this? Because I want readers to know me. The average American reads one book a year. The top CEOs in America read book five books a month, 60 plus books a year. Okay, you want to be in the game? Read. I buy books. I'm not, I don't care about the 30 bucks the book costs. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for $1 million every book I open. I'm looking for a million bucks. Okay, I quit looking for $10. I did that when I was a kid. I'm looking for millions now. I'm looking for a million dollars. How many believe this is much work to work for $10 as it is for a million? It's the same amount of work, man. Same amount of rejection. Same amount of uphill. It's the same amount of bullshit. Okay? So you just change the target. Okay? If you were homeless and I was going to coach you out of homeless, the first thing I would tell you is not to change your clothes, not change your location, just change your ask. The ask. Do I need a... Can you give me a hundred? How about a hundred, man? Just a hundred, man. How many believe he'd be better off at the end of the day if he was asking for a hundred rather than a quarter? Just to change the amount you're asking for. You see what I'm saying? You, you know, when I go into an organization, I want to do the easy stuff, not the hard stuff. I don't want to change a guy's clothes, his location, and everything. I just want to change one little thing. So today I'm telling, talking to you about, man, change what you're reading every day. Change what you're reading. Change the influence of your getting. A guy gets this book. We heard this last night. He's on the audio version of this book. He goes from 30,000 a month in income to 80,000 a month in income in one month. He's been on the program for four days, okay? He's like, oh my God, man, I scored the, first, the fourth day I was on the program. He starts listening to it again. Everywhere he goes, he's listening to this audio program. All of a sudden, it changes the way he's thinking about how much action he has to take. It takes 10 times the amount of activity, phone calls, emails. It takes 10 times just to per burst through noise. Would you agree? You're trying to get people's attention because you're in obscurity with them. Hey, could you meet me tonight? He's thinking about picking up his daughter tonight. You're in obscurity. He doesn't know who you are yet. So if you want to get successful, a couple things you got to do. You got to get certain. How many of you agree with that? Okay. That doesn't mean at this conference this weekend. That means when you leave here, man, what can I cover myself up so that I'm certain? Number two, how do I get out of obscurity? How do I get people to know me? You, everybody here should write a book. Everybody in this room should write a book. You should be writing blogs. You should be tweeting every day. Okay. Twitter, Twitter and, and Facebook, these are not new things. These are prospecting tools. These are tools that cost nothing. And for those of you in the room have, have kind of like just said, I don't have time for social media. I got a business to run. Anybody ever heard anybody say that? I don't have time for Twitter. I'm running a business into the ground. <laughs> okay, just, just, just to crash some old beliefs, okay? Just so you see what this, this does. I'm going to take a picture of these people over here, okay? 
and just tell me anybody got a second hand on their watch tell me how long this takes a watch okay sorry uh, let's see how long did that take 10 seconds 223,000 people will see that tweet I don't have time for Twitter no, you, 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 you're competing and not dominating. You're not using the tools available to you. They're free. Facebook and Twitter are your friends. LinkedIn is your friend. You need to understand them. You can't delegate this, okay? You don't turn this over to one of your people in your office. There's not a person in my office that can come to me and knows more about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, communicating, because I could have a social media person that doesn't know how to communicate. Would you agree? He knows all this fancy stuff about Twitter, but he doesn't know how to market on it. He doesn't know how to get a tip on it. You want to get attention. You've got to get out of obscurity with people. The third problem you have is they're not thinking about you when they go to pull the trigger. Yeah, I knew you were in real estate. How many had this situation? They didn't get a list your house because they forgot about you. Oh my God, I forgot. How many had that, ex that experience? You failed on number three. They weren't thinking about you when, when they were ready to pull the trigger. And number four, because you lack persistence. It's very difficult to be persistent. Particularly if you're living in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a thinking that I'm going to try once, I'm going to try twice, I'm going to try three times, and that's it. It's going to take way more than three times. Would you agree? My wife watched me call one man 15 times in three days without a return phone call. She's like, how many times are you going to call him? Oh, I'm going to call him until, until we talk. My God. I'm like, it worked on you. It worked on you. I meet this way. You ever seen an ugly guy with a beautiful woman? You ever seen that? You're like, how did, how did he do that? That is impossible. How many have seen that before? Okay. I met my wife the first night I moved to Los Angeles. I met her. I knew immediately. I'm like, that's my wife right there. I'm going to marry her. She's going to have my children guarantee you I know for sure I called my mom hey I met my wife tonight you've been out with her nah she doesn't want to have anything to do with me okay what's my job now I gotta sell her I don't need to date her I gotta sell her I called her twice a month for 13 months without a return phone call if you ask my wife ask her the story if you ever meet her great chick 13 months man twice a month not one return phone call okay her friends are like grant you got to quit calling her man this is like bordering on stalking i'm like it's not stalking if it works if it works is it stalking no it's marriage okay i need to stay interested see this is what people do they set a target you remember when you were a kid and you set targets that were big giant had nothing to do with reason. They were giant, right? And then you had some difficulty getting to it and somebody said what? Dude, your goals are unrealistic. You need to drop your goals down and add 40 years and end up with nothing. Certainly not congruent with your potential. How many believe you have more potential than you're going for right now? Dude, it's way up here. It's, it's beyond what you're going for. So you want to set it here. I want to set my targets up here. I never lower a target. Never, ever. That's my target. I'll fail on my target. My whole lifetime I might fail on that target, but I won't let it, let it go. So when I, when I first started buying real estate, I used to write this down. I own 10 apartments. I own 10 plus apartments. That's all I buy is apartment boards. I own 10 plus apartments. I own 10 plus apartments. I own 10 plus apartments. First deal I ever bought was 38 units. About 38, I own 100 apartments. I just changed my number. I own 100. So next deal I bought was 40. Next deal I bought was 70. Next deal I bought was 250. Um, hey, let's go. I got to stay interested. I got to keep my targets up here. I got to keep changing that target. So I'm in it. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about success, money, accumulation. I'm talking about keeping me interested in my potential. It is my duty. It's my obligation. It's my responsibility. And I would say to you, this is. I guess you can hear the problem. I, 
I just want to be sure you guys know, okay? I would say to you that it's your duty, your obligation, and your responsibility to fulfill your potential and that that's actually what success is. Success is not money. Success is, I'm going to get this chick to marry me, right? I'm going to get, I'm going to get her attention. What was my problem? Uncertainty. Okay, let me X that off, dude. I'm certain she's the right one, okay? She is the one. Calls. Guy calls me on the phone. Hey, man, can you handle, do you have any short sales? Uh, sir, did somebody tell you to ask for me? Do you know how powerful that line is? Do you know how powerful that opening line is? You have no short sale inventory, nothing, zero. It's been going for 90 days. You got anything that's, that, that's being short sold, anything up at the bank? Did somebody tell you to ask for me? What did you just, just say to him? Guy. Your guy, right? You didn't say you had any product. You said, I'm your guy. I can help you. you, think, you we, we had a bankruptcy two years ago. Did somebody tell you to ask for me? Enthusiasm. Where's your enthusiasm at? Oh, yeah. It's in your living room. You're watching Jennifer Lopez on American Idol. That's where it's, that's, you left it right there. Oh, she was so good. Dude, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You know what? Most people are going to spend more time in their life working than any other single thing and not being successful. Man, work is good. It's unbelievable, particularly when you're winning. Right? Me having to work for my wife is good for me. Right or wrong? What, what do I, okay, she doesn't want to go out with me, so I'll lower my target. Let me go get an eight. Okay, that doesn't work. Let me get a six. Whatever that is, right? Okay, let me get a four. All right, I'll just go to a strip joint. <laughs> that's why most guys, no offense, ladies, but that's why girl, they have the girl they want because they, they, they take shortcut. Use too many quick options. I mean, you to be... You got to be totally committed. Everybody agree? You got to be completely uncertain. You want a million dollars? You want two million dollars? You want five million dollars? How much money do you want? How much success do you want? How much notoriety do you want? You want a New York Times bestseller? Why can't you have everything? Oh, but I'm 65. So what? Man, Colonel, Colonel Harlan Sanders made all his money after he was 65 years old. He wasted the first 64 years. Okay? I got a little girl, a little girl. I have this baby. We have two babies right now. Both of them born at my house. We don't go to hospitals. I go to the doctor. My wife's pregnant. Is she really pregnant? Oh my God, I'm so excited. I know I did that. <laughs> Grant, what hospital y'all going to? Dude, we ain't going to a hospital. She ain't sick. She's pregnant. Why would I bring her to a place with sick people? That's just dumb. Grant, man, you, you, you got to bring her to a hospital. No, I don't. You got to come to the house and help me. I didn't go to a hospital to have sex with her. I didn't start it there. I ain't going to finish it there, baby. Grant, you don't know anything about having children. I, dude, I don't know anything about most things I did the first time. But you know what? I'm certain we ain't going to a hospital. It's not complicated. She's young enough. She's in good shape. I got a decent head on my shoulders. Don't show me what to do. We're going to do it at the house. I am not going to have the single most important single moment of my life robbed by a hospital because I get a third row seat and I get to hug a vending machine the whole time because they kick me back to the curb and say, get back there, buddy, we're the professionals. I want to be involved. See what I'm telling you? Everything in life, the phone calls, the phone calls, whatever you're doing, do, what is happening? Get involved in your business or you will be disciplined again. And it's going to be ugly and it's going to be painful for a lot of people. A guy says, you know, Grant, I hear you talk about money a lot. A lot and you know, I just want to tell you, money won't make you happy. I said, yeah, what's your point, dude? Your point is you ain't got any money. That's why you're giving this dumb advice. Because <laughs> being broke won't make you happy either. Okay, I tried the experiment. I went on the experiment. How many have been on the broke experiment? Were you happy? Were you like, oh my God, this is good. Look, if you, if you took $5 million out of the marketplace and you made $5 million from planet Earth, would anybody know an event took place? Would anybody know anything happened? Would you do good things with that money? Good. 
How many believe the work for five million is gonna be the same work for 50,000? Same process, same involvement. Look, you're occupied either way, okay? So if you're not sure of your value, if you think you're worth 80 grand, you're worth 80 grand. Would you agree? If you think you're worth 150 grand, you're probably worth 150. If you think you're, whatever you think you're worth, if you're not sure of your own value, your own goals and what you want, the world will never reward you of what you want, your value and your goals. Never, it won't happen, it can't happen. I gotta remind myself every day, what is my value in the marketplace? What are my goals in the marketplace? What am I worth in the marketplace, okay? What do I deserve in the market? I deserve those 242 units. I deserve to make money on those 242 units. I deserve to sell this house and make a profit. I deserve to be able to move to Miami. I deserve this woman. I deserve these two kids. I deserve to have my kids learn to swim rather than putting a fence around my pool. Because I don't want a fence around my pool. I hate the fence. Just teach them how to swim, man dominate the kid put the kid in the pool every day okay she's three days old i'm dunking her in the pool every day try this try this try this try this okay she's not crying the mom's crying the baby's like hey it's cool dude i've been in water for nine months whatever right my daughter's one year old i can throw her in the pool and walk away at one year old i can walk away she can swim the entire length of the pool at three she can swim it underwater I know, I, I got, we got friends that are eight years old. They, they, they get around the pool and everybody's freaked out. The point is what? Dominate. Whatever you want, you gotta commit all the way in and think in terms of domination, not a spectator. You don't wanna be a spectator, folks. Spectators pay, players get paid. Believe, you look at the word up believe. This is in a Webster dictionary, okay? You probably have one of those. If, if you don't have one at your house, you can certainly Google it. It's going to say this, to have confidence in the truth, the existence, or the reliability of something. Although without absolute proof, how many believe that the real estate market's getting better? Okay. How many believe it could get worse? Good. Hey, that's right. And when it gets worse, what are you going to believe? I'm going to believe, hey, dude, there's still value there. You got good? There's still value there. Okay. How many, how many, how many of you have shown somebody a house before they didn't pull the trigger and, and they regretted it? You know what, shame on you. Why didn't you shut that deal down? I don't wanna pressure anybody. If you won't pressure a client that you like, it's because you don't believe in you, the product, okay, or the company that you represent, period. If you will not pressure somebody to do the right thing, it's something you don't believe in. Look at the word, what it believe means. To have confidence in the truth. What is the truth? This is a good deal and you need to do it. You're pressuring me, Grant. I sure am. Now sign right there. Let's do this. It's the right thing. Why? He looks at me and says, what? Oh my God, this guy is so certain. Are you sure it's the right thing? Guarantee it's the right thing. Lean on the pen. Let's do it. And you're thinking to yourself, I couldn't do that right now. Dude, I wasn't taught how to do this. I spent 17 years in school. They don't teach you this. You have to train this muscle. Okay. If one of your children was crossing the street and you knew it was a bad thing, would you pressure them not to? Exactly. Why is pressure a bad thing? It makes diamonds. But I know so many people in business, I don't want to pressure anybody. Do you need to pressure yourself? You need to cook yourself. You need a necessity level way up here. Look, the middle class in America is failing, folks. It's failing. You know why? Because it doesn't push itself hard enough. It operates on a premise based on just enough. I'm going to make enough, vacation enough, save enough, just enough. Oh, I forgot to plan on Lehman's. Oh, forgot the plan on foreclosures. Oh, forgot the plan on LIBOR. Oops, forgot the plan on the internet bust. And that's why the middle class is failing. The middle class isn't failing because of politics. Okay, the middle class is failing because the middle class is using the wrong formula. A formula that worked 40 years ago might not work in the U.S. economy today. Right? Maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that five-day job, maybe that gig's over and maybe it's seven days now. Maybe it's a seven day pitch now. I, I don't know. I know in my life it's seven days. I'll never ever have my freedom taken from me again. So it's not money I'm trying to accumulate. It's market share I'm trying to accumulate. I'm trying to accumulate market share so when things soften again, who's left? The strongest player in the market. 
So although without absolute proof that one is right in doing so, only if one believes in something can one act purposefully. Okay, that means I need to be every day selling myself, selling myself. I'm going to write a New York Times bestselling book. Okay, I'm going to speak to tens of thousands of people. I'm going to help millions of people on planet Earth. I'm, I'm literally reminding myself every day. When I wake up in the morning, I write my goals down. When I go to bed at night, I write my goals down. It's the first thing and the last thing I do every day. I've been doing that for 25 years. Puts me in, I'm dominating myself in my own thinking. Success formula. Okay, here are four steps that I learned when I was 51 years old. I'm like, oh man, there it is, baby. That's it. That's it. That's what you've been doing. That's what all the successful people have been doing. Here are four steps you must take to create the next level of success in your life. Number one, you must get attention. Hey, hey. See, that's what I mean. You got to get attention. If you got a screen to get it, get it. Okay, the moment you start, hey, you listening to me? See, the moment you start doing that, you're going to start getting criticism. When you hit that right band, that right tone level of attention, okay, where you're really getting attention, you're going to get criticism. Somebody's going to say, dude, you need to quiet down, bro. You need to bring it down a notch, bro. Bro, bro, you freaking. Dude, we, hey, this is a party. Let's not talk business now. Go chill. I'm getting criticism. Is that good or bad? The Kardashians love it. Right? The Kardashians have worked this formula perfectly. Monster attention. No product. There's no product. Huh? Is that a product? That ain't a product, man. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Over and over. Look at that. Look at that. Huh? Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Okay? And she, she gets criticism. She, they didn't start banking until they got the haters. They had to get haters. Wherever they got criticism, they actually kept throwing wood on the fire to actually get something bigger than criticism, which was hate, which was, I hate those people. That's what promoted them. It wasn't the promotion that promoted them. It was the disgust for them. Okay? And th until they moved into this fourth step, which is admiration. See, most people stop here. You, you get a little criticism and you sh shut it down. I'm calling you back too much? Okay, I won't do that again. You should call him back more. You send an email back. Hey, quit sending me emails. No, you should double up. Okay? You should stay with the cycle until you close the cycle, folks. Why? Because you believe. You believe it's the right thing to do. Belief is not something, some esoteric thing. Belief is some action you take all the time in the marketplace. Say, hey, I'm doing the right thing for you. You just don't know it. Your confidence, okay? You got to build it until you're invincible. That's why you come to this. That's why you read books. That's why you bury yourself in audio programs. The internet is a very dangerous place today because you can look at anything. What do these people have in common, okay? There's Michael Jordan, Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, Oprah, a Navy SEAL, and my mother, okay? You know what they had in common? This. Greatness has in common, immersion. They're immersed, they're immersed completely in their environment. Number two, they're dedicated, completely dedicated. Three, they have a total, total commitment. My mother was as committed as Warren Buffett is. Do you know what Warren Buffett spends most of his time doing? Reading. Most of his time during the day is spent reading. And they're duty driven. All those people are duty driven. Okay, whether it was my mom, Oprah, Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, at some point it was no longer for money, it was duty. It's my obligation. It's some, some sense of, I have to do this. So what do you hear me say to you today? What do you hear me say? Immerse yourself, okay? You have to immerse yourself right now with reading, the right reading, audio programs, video. Find YouTube channels that are good for you to where you can watch YouTube. Like, we started dropping videos on YouTube uh, maybe 24 months ago. We dropped about 900 videos on YouTube. That's what got me my TV show. People saw me on YouTube. The UK found YouTube videos two weeks ago. Dude, we love what you're doing on YouTube, man. Can you come out to the UK and do a TV show? Why? I'm breaking through obscurity. Anybody can do this, folks. Anybody can do this. This is not about a college degree. This is about massive amounts of action to get attention for yourself, your brand, your company, your products, your ideas, your dreams. Then this is what I would tell you to do, okay? And I'm gonna close out here. Number one, I would immerse yourself with books, audio, video, daily, okay? You hit all three of those, where I'm reading something, listening to something, and watching something. These are completely different ways to learn. Number two, you want to test your abilities. Actually, if you have employees, how many of you have employees? 
you need to test their abilities. Just because somebody's good at what they do doesn't mean they have an ability. You want to test their abilities with assignments, tests, and drills. Look, the economy needs people like me and you driving the marketplace. It's entrepreneurs and businesses that build economies. Would you agree? It's me and you, not governments. Governments do not build economies. People build economies. Entrepreneurs, people with ideas, people that are driven. You, people like Alex, are the ones that make the economy. And frankly, folks, it's your duty as an American to get out into the marketplace and be a role model and recreate this economy. Thank you very much.